This skills lab in the College of Veterinary Medicine is just one example of how professors are tapping into the creativity when coming up with the syllabi to ensure students still get the most out of their education. I had never, like, never done an online lecture or anything, but then the pandemic just forced me into that and it was like, well, I don't have any other choice, I've got to do this. It was a matter of learning overnight how to entertain the students with valid didactic activities. My courses pre-COVID were very interactive. There's a lot of discussion, and so trying to move that into a Zoom format has been complicated. Oklahoma State's decision to return to campus for the fall meant teachers needed to prepare for hybrid learning. Most classes afford students the option of attending in person or virtually, but for Dr. Jennifer Jones, whose courses focus on intellectual and developmental disabilities, it meant finding a way to incorporate service learning, which allows students to integrate course content with their experiences in the community, while solely teaching online. It's too important, both for students, but also for the community that we serve. We decided that book clubs would be the best format, that that was the most easily transferable. And even a pig, Okay. Rolling. Rolling. An old soccer ball. Old soccer ball. <laughs> Did you know that pigs can play soccer? That's crazy. The goal of when we've done book club is about social inclusion. What this has done is it has created an opportunity, a platform where once a week we can get together. While Dr. Jones shifted to entirely online teaching, professors in veterinary medicine had the opposite dilemma, how to give students required hands-on learning while maintaining social distancing guidelines. We came up with a plan which included the creation of what we call a simulation lab, which includes um, animal mannequins and computer software to create real operating room scenarios. Um, trachea is a little larger than it otherwise would be, right? Yeah. Um, but the in-person rotation part of the course is supplemented with at-home reading and self-teaching. My idea of the students learning at home was the part that I could not do easily, and that is with the theory part of it. Surgical articles related to what they would be doing in hospital were part of their learning. Vet med students weren't the only ones self-teaching. Accounting professor Dr. Brian Brockbank taught himself how to produce high-quality video lesson plans to distribute to multiple courses. During the summer, I just like come into my office day after day after day, recording lecture videos to myself in there. I'd made my own green screen to put behind me. I anticipated using them for a long time in the future, and so I wanted to make a higher quality product. How many videos did you record for your classes? Since we went virtual, the number's over 200. The best practice for online learning is to make them like six to eight minute videos. So I'll have like a video talking through the concept and then separate video, Here's a, let's work through an example together. Cost of goods available for sale, which is your cost of goods sold plus your ending inventory, right? It's the same what has been the feedback from students and colleagues on the work that you've done? I think the biggest thing has just been appreciation from students because, I mean, it was hard for everybody and they're just so appreciative of any effort that you make. For State Magazine, I'm Megan Robinson.